and I'll come back home. So this is now the project where we want to build so and make we see how this project could they work for here. So I just give her more name, say now Pigeon GPT and it just tell us say we never ask anything yet. So make we ask him something. Make we first tell him say hi. Make we see what he go talk. So if you come here and then you click ask AI, you go see say if they ask me say how you day and it will respond back in Pigeon English. This is not chat GPT where we use under the hood. And chat GPT, not just AI way they help us like an assistant. Make I just ask them some kind more questions. Make I say I define money. And you just see, say it respond. So you say it be like say you define money. I'll be waiting on take the money do. Now to find work or start business, it even ask me, say, say, say I won't find work, or I won't find business. So when I don't get the idea, say this now our Pigeon GPT where we build from scratch. And by the end of this video, now go feel make on our own to do even more. Before we start, I could just like thank all of you now. We don't they subscribe. I see say our channel don't they grow small small. And now we don't they even comment. I appreciate say when I even take time self to the comment so now I get my out pass. As this community don't they grow like this, eh? We make we start to the build community projects together. I go to share these projects for our Telegram community. We go to feel they learn from each other for this tech thing where we they do so. So I go break this video into two parts. The first part go be say we go first build the back end. We go to run them on top of our local machine. So I go show now for the second. I will go take build the front end and I will go take deploy the application as a full stack application to a server somewhere on the internet. I feel share with your future employers or your future clients. If you define the finished version of this code, no worry, I go drop the link. So now if you clone them from GitHub, if you want to follow along, now fit make we start to build them from scratch. Before we start to do anything at all, you're gonna need to come besides. We they call them Node.js.org. If you come here, you're gonna need to download Node.js and you're gonna need to install Node.js. No worry if you don't know Node.js, I go teach you now everything where you need Node. Now, what you want to do for here, we say you go just come here, download the LTS version, and then secondly, what you go do, we say you're gonna need to install PNPN. First, install Node, and after you don't install Node, at that time, you go come for install. PNPM for here so if you come this site pnpm.io and if you come pnpm.io you will come here make i minimize this one you go come here uh the installation side and if you install pnpm by npm so for your first time you could just install them by saying uh npm install dash g pnpm so i did inside my vs code now and i don't open up my terminal the first thing we're gonna need to do now say we're gonna need first initialize pnpm so make we say pnpm in it for here and this don't help us create this package json file so this package json now just our uh, control center for all the things all our dependencies all our scripts where we could run all those things we could do that one for here so so make we install the following dependencies so we just say pnpm add so the first one we need now uh, body parser so we'll say body dash parser we'll do space then we'll say we want the course uh we'll say we want the dot env and then we'll say also we want express make we press enter for here this is going to install all our dependencies. As those dependencies they install, make we first change some of these settings for here so that we go feel they run our projects. For inside this test, make we first change and make we add our own script where we want. And then make we set up node. Make we just call out. Remember, say you're gonna need install node for this. Um, script to run and then we could just put the file where we want to create so we'll say we want the server.js and make we create this server.js file so for inside here the root directory for here what we're going to do is say we go come create a new file so you right click for here for vs code or you could just click here this new file icon and then we could just column server.js so now this file we would write all our backend code we're going to help us to save our API for here. So, so we'll come here. 
back into our package.json we're going to need set up our server.js as the main for here so we could just say we want server as all this thing don't install for here what we're going to do is say make we go back into the browser make we start today set up our open ai for inside my browser for here so i get this open ai website so you could just need to come this side open ai and open ai now the company where they make this chat gpt as soon as i go down here by now now go figure online if you see many other information about this kind of thing but the idea is say we will be developers so one way we'll be say we feel they integrate this ai into all our application and how we feel build our own chat box for ourselves so that's not why we feel come here so you could come into this developer side and then you go click this uh, overview for here when you click this overview you go carry you come this site for here this overview or this site this now platform.openai slash overview this site you feel um see the documentation you feel refer uh, reference the api for here and if you see other examples for here you understand so i go advise you now make you now explore all these other examples so that i will see how we they build this application and why we they do them the way we they do them so make we log in if you never get account with chat gpt you feel sign up here but if you get account with chat gpt or open ai if you log in with that uh we go log in with our google account of course correct so i don't log in to chat gpt you feel they do everything where you want what you want to be say we won't collect the api key so make we come here into this profile for here and then make we click on and then you go come view api key for here now once you come this view api key i don't get all these keys for here you see say i get many keys for here so you could just come create new key this will help me generate new api key so never close this window what you want to be say you want to copy this key and then we go start to the add them into our code so make we go back into our vs code so opening i don't already get library where they don't build for us so because no js not javascript we feel use javascript they interact with this for inside the terminal for here we go say make we run pnpm add and then we go just add the package we want which now open ai so now once we don't press enter for here this will just help us they install the package for open ai but to get some kind of other things we're going to do so make we go create an environment variable file we don't know why we install this dot env so you go click new file and then we'll say dot env and this dot env is going to help us they manage our environment variable and for inside the dot env file what you want to do is say we want just add our environment variable here so make we just call them open ai api key and then make we add our new key as we don't paste them so we feel do anything we want with this api key make we go into the server.js we want first import our environment variable so we'll say we want import all as dot env from dot env library once we import them we're going to need to uh, call them so we'll say we want the dot env dot config all right after we don't call them like this import open ai the first thing we need from open ai is the configuration class so we're going to import that one and then the next one we're going to need for here now the open ai api the next thing we need is say we're going to need import those other packages so maybe we first import them so we'll say import and i'm going to explain what in each one they do so we're going to import the express we go still import another one go import body parser we go still import course once we don't import all these packages we won't configure our open ai to do that we go first create a variable and we could call them uh open ai config so we'll say open ai config and if you call them anything you want if you call them good if you call them monkey no matter and then for here you could just say you want to do a new configuration for inside here you won't pass an object now this they expect the open ai key make we add our environment variable process dot env and as we do like this this will give us access to the environment variable then make we say another dot and then we go fit pass the name of the environment variable for this one. so make we say we want initialize this config so make we say we want them as a constant so we'll just say open ai 
Make me say we want um, involved a new class as this OpenAI API will be first defined for the top. Then we go pass in our configuration of OpenAI configuration for here. As we don't do it like this, the next thing we're going to do is say make we try set up our server. Just underneath the OpenAI, make we say we want set up our Express server for here. So we'll say one const app and make we just assign them to Express. And as we don't assign them to Express here, so make we just create a port for our server. And this port make we just assign them to 8000. So make we use the middleware way Express do already give us. So we're gonna say we want the Express, which now this app where we refer to, but we're gonna say we want to use something. And then how we they use middleware for Express? So we're gonna say use. So we're gonna say we want the body parser, and this go. This body parser it will help us to arrange the body or the format our code. We won't make it help us arrange like JSON. Make we call the JSON method for here. The next thing we're going to do is say we just want to use Express again, but we won't use another middleware. I'm going to say use. So we'll say course and we go call it like this. So as we call this course now, we now we don't know what in course error B. Now security measure we be say browsers get we be say our code go feed they communicate with our server. But if you want video make I explain more in depth, just let me know. So make we just set up a route. So we say app dot get. So anytime we we get when we run a get uh, request, we we'll first put in the route where we won't go. So we go say anytime we go to the home page, the root directory with a slash. The second parameter will just be an anonymous function. So we go say now the fat arrow anonymous function we want run for here. Inside this anonymous function for here, let's make it just say we want pass in the request, okay? And the second parameter for inside this anonymous function now the response. So what we want to be say we want send response. We want to call the send method on top of the response. Then I waiting we want do for here. One simple message will just tell us say the server they work. This is supposed to give us this message anytime. Where we hit this route for our server, this uh, home page or root directory on top of our server. And just underneath here, make we just say we want listening to the server's port. Make I add a comment for now. And for here, make we start to the listening to our server. So we'll say app dot listen. For inside here, the first parameter where they take now our port, then at this port 8000 for here, we we'll go pass that port in there. And the second parameter, of course, now uh, a callback function. And then make we just CLG something, or make we just console log something for here. I did used to run. <laughs> inside this console log statement, make we just say. So if we run our local host and we hit this URL for here, we won't get this message back. So make we try and make sure say our script they run. So we go come clean all here. Make we run our first script. So run them like this, say node server.js. So server.js. Make sure say you run this for inside your terminal and this is supposed to run our code. So we get an error here. And then because we they use the import statements for inside our uh, server file. So for inside our server file, we they use imports. So make we fix that issue. We we'll just need to come into your package JSON. And for inside the package JSON, we're gonna need just set the type. Make we just call them type. Can't say if you choose either between common or module. So we're gonna say we want module. Now, as we set them as module, this supposed help us run our code. So make we run them again. And this supposed tell us say you see our server is running on the server. So once you don't like this, I don't know why not to show my emojis, but our server don't they run and uh, make we try enter into our server. To enter the server for VS Code, you want to install this Thunder client. Once you install this Thunder client, go you make requests. Once you don't install them, you click this Thunder client for here, and then we feed the make request from this Thunder client. So we could just say we want a new request. We want to run a get request, and this get request we want to run them from localhost. Don't forget put the request. So we say HTTP and make it done like this slash localhost. And then we will just put the port where we want, which now the 8000 for our server. Once we done like this, we supposed to make a request and then we supposed to get this message for here. So this they tell us, say our server, they work everything now gang gang for us for here. So very good job guys. If you make them this way, if you get any uh, issue, wait, you know, they work up to this point. No worry, no panic. Just go back, watch the video again, rewind the video again, go slow, slow. Then you go understand what they do for here. So as this, they work, make we go back into our server JS. 
and then let's make we first end the server for here. So we'll say we want pnpm add and we'll say we want node mon. And this will help us they refresh our node server every time. This will help us save them as a dev dependency. Correct. So node mon don't already install. So make we go back into our package JSON. Make we add a new script for here. Make we call them our dev script. So we'll just duplicate this line, add a comma here, then make we call them dev. And this dev script, make we just call them node mon. And now, anytime we run our pnpm dev, so make we run here for inside our terminal, this will help us set up um, fire our node mon and our node mon. Anytime we make changes on top of our server file, so we could come back into the server file and then we make changes for here. You just say now the server message you don't clear for here. So, yeah, that emoji thing don't sort for here. So, make we save them. And now you just say our server don't they run. What do you want to do for here? We say one express which are our app but one make a post request so we'll say post and one call on this post method so we could just say okay one hit slash api and if we hit this api endpoint for here so what you want to be saying we want to run an asynchronous function or a callback function so we could just say we want a sync and then we could call our anonymous function for here. Make we say, just like this one for here, we want the request. And the second parameter, we want set them as the uh, response. Make we first say we want const. And make we just call this one the client message. Okay. And this client message, make we just assign them to the request. That's req dot body. And what thing this will do be say this will help us get what we put for the body of our request. Make we console log that value. Now, anytime when we send a request request to the API um, route to this route for here, it will help us to the console log this value for here. Once we get that value for here, we're going to need to use the response to the send a response back from this backend to the user. That's not what we want to do with this server. So we're going to say we want response dot JSON because we want to send the response back to the user as JSON. And then we could just call this um, uh, key, we could call them completion. We could just put some kind text say hello from server. Make we test now, make we go back into our Thunder client, create a new request because we want to create a post request. So we go say for here, instead of um, the get request, what you go do, we say you go make a post request. So we go come this post and then we go just change this route from here to HTTP colon slash slash uh, and then we go just say localhost, but we want to check the port of 8000. And now we go say we want to go slash api so anytime when we hit this route slash api which now wait till we don't set for our server for the back end when we hit this this uh, slash api of this port it suppose give us a response back so make we post and make we see what's going to happen so if i click there you can see say we did get this completion from server likewise if we also want to send the body because now json what we're going to use if you just come here into this body uh, tab for here. So this is a this now JSON. That's why I get this quote for here for this row. Now when I know it's in JSON B, I drop video on for now on top JSON. So now we go send them. So if I press send, you go see say we don't get our response from the server. And if you look here, you go see say we get our message inside the server. So that's not very interesting thing. I hope so now don't understand what they try to do, what they try to explain. So make we come back into our code. Make we just clean this console log even under this client message. Make we say we want const. And make we just call this chat completion. And this chat completion, make we assign them um, to an await. Because now synchronous function where they work with, we feel make them um, an await for them. Then we go say we want the open AI does create chat completion it's a method where they accept an object now this object it they collect the model so where to be the model well the model if you come to the documentation for here 
you go see say the models na just the kind api we open ai get for us so the one we really work with now this one we won't work so if you come here click on you go see say we get different versions of this chat gpt 3.5 like you just copy them for inside our code you could just put them for inside code say so you go now need to send your message so the message we want now accept an array of objects so we want an array where they collect different objects and for inside this object, what you want to say, we say, we want to set the role. And if we set this role, we want to set it to system. And the second item for this object as the content. So whatever content where we get for here, now we want put. But before that, because we did set the system for here, then our chat GPT system go tell this chat GPT completion or content, what we want to make it be. So I could just give them anything we want. So you could just say, you'll be my helper for now. Make we just say, we want our client message as the second object or any other object we do inside here. Now, as we don't do them like this, make we just talk, say, we want test, say our code, they work. What do you want to do? Say, make we first console log this chart completion. And make we see what in this chart completion they do for us for here. So make we go back into the request uh, form for here, and then make we send another post request. Say make we say we want uh, something like hi. So make we say hi. So the reason why we they get this error, we say we never configure our header. As we don't set the body like this, we go also need set our headers. So and for here we will consider the content type make i clean these ones because we don't need these ones now once set the value of this content type to application slash json uh, click here so now you see say we they get a response back from the user and our uh, status code now 200 which means say everything they work senge menge for here minimize this one make i just drop this come down small and then uh, what we're going to do for here, we say we won't come back into our server. If the, the status message, then a dot status, if not 200, we won't come do the JSON. This JSON, where we're going to get, we're going to use that they send our response back. Remember, if you look for inside this object for here, where we get, we go see, say, we get many things where they here. So make I scroll down, make I show now. So if I come inside this data for here, we go see, say, we get our message. Now, how we go take work with this data? Make we just come back down. Oh, sorry, make I put this down. And then what you want to do, we say, for inside this, our completion now, this completion object, now we want to apply this, our chat completion where we just built so we say chat completion dot data and this go access the data object but inside this data object make we try console log see what we get so we say data i'm going to just leave this out first so if i click here again and say we want to send the same request and you see say we get these choices so you get how we go to work with these choices array so make we go back into our server we want access the choices now as we don't they access these choices we want to take the first parameter sorry we want to take the first item from this choices array which now zero right and then we want to take the dot message all right once you do them like this we suppose they get a message back from chat gpt so make we press save for here and make we see how uh we fit test them so make we go back into our thunder client hit the api again and now we're supposed to get a response inside our console where if we say hi then it will say hello uh how can i assist you today you will see say the role now assistant and the content now uh, from chat gpt so what you want to do we say as we don't get these settings or our response back from chat gpt and we don't they uh, work with them what you want to be saying we want to export them so i could just console log this uh I could just comment this console log message out and then comment this uh, JSON data. And then we could just say, okay, well, for inside here, what you want to do is say, we want to add this code for here. So I could just leave this here for now. Make on a CC. Now, so we they get this chat back from chat GPT. So the way we take Duam for here, this you'll be my helper. Now, this now, what we they call few shots learning. 
and this few short learning that just say we they teach them in a very short way as a prompt waiting it be how you gonna be it get other ways where if you even still customize your model and if you now want to see video of how we they fine tune our models make gonna let me know so i go show now how we they fine tune a model for here but the idea be say we fit fine tune them to waiting one make it be so make i quickly fine tune this one into the one we're going to speak pidgin english for us for here and as i don't do them like this i just tell them say in a um, pgpt a powerful pidgin english uh, translator where we chatbot and i just tell them say all you go to talk now for pidgin english and i tell them say na me or na we now we make this application for here for our small community for here now this little information will make this machine or this api come the thing say in na really really pigeon gpt in b test them again make we go back into our request and make we hit send for here make we see what you do and you see say the response here it on the show say how you day my person <laughs> waiting you want to talk about chat gpt don't they respond as we want but make we try give them some kind other parameters like i go like give them a temperature temperature now say if you want make the response or make chat gpt day precise or make it day creative so we we'll say temperature and this temperature we go come give them the value we want so if they take anything between zero to about two i think so make we just say 0 0.3 for here and now if we try run that our request again it will give us a different response make we try out so if you come here make we see what and send go do you go see say it can they give us a different response it says how you day waiting i feel do for you and it go be less creative if we say make we increase that value even save to three um i'm sorry to two make we see what thing will happen so if i clean that up and say two make we try send a request again so if you come here and then we say make we press send you don't go do freestyle on the right the we can do where you want to you even the right one language i know you understand but now get the idea so the temperature now in the make them they behave the way it they behave so we we'll just set them to 0 0.3 if you use 0 0.6 if you use one as we don't do it like this all our backend don't set up we go need way where we say we go feed they send this request instead of make our customers or clients they use this thunder client to so they make requests what you want to be say we won't build the front end so now if we look inside this our folder you can see say we get this um, back end all set up on top of our root directory so make we create a new folder here make we call this folder front end make we first end our server then make we navigate into the front end so to do that make i just make this bigger for now make we just change directory into this front end directory and as we did inside there for inside our terminal so what we go do we say we want to add all the other packages where we need so make we say we want to run pnpm create vit now this will help us create a vit project for here so make we just leave them say this is now our front end just set them to react say we want to react and then we go say we want the javascript version of react make sure say you day inside your terminal for inside this directory because this go act as the front end root directory so we we'll just press install this go install all our dependencies for us all our dev dependencies everything we need it don't set up for here we don't install everything so you go look into our package.json for the front end you can see say we get everything for here what we need for our project so we get vit we get uh, react setup you get some kind of things but we would like to do but first make we run say make we run the code and say everything they work so we go say pnpm and we go run this dev script where they here for inside this bit uh script for here so we say dev and once we run it like this this supposed open our browser it's supposed to run our front end code on top of this local host 5173 it's not the default setting so if i just if i press ctrl and click 
you will go see say it go open our VIT React project, which now the standard uh, project where they follow VIT they come. So now when we don't get this script and everything done they run, we could go back into our VS Code. And what you want to do to say for inside this SRC? So make we go into the app.jsx. Now here we go free clean all this other code. So make I just reduce this one here, this term, my terminal. And I go clean all the code up to the top for here. Then make we say we want even clean the state because we go we go change the state eventually. Make we come out these two uh, logos where they here. Make we even come out the CSS and then make we come out the app.css. So because I want to delete that file for here. So now we just get this app and we get the index. The index.css, make we clean all this. We go replace all the CSS in a bit. I could just copy the code paste now. I'm going to show now. So make we come here into the app.jsx. I would like to change them to a class. I uh, make we just give this class name main and we go use these classes to style our CSS and all those kind of things. That's not all we use these class names for for here. But for inside this div here, make we just say we want the H1. After we don't write that H1, make we just say we want a div and we want this div, make it get a class of log. And this log, now here we're going to put all the lists where we say all the charts, where we say chat GPT go to follow us, they respond with. So we could just say we want a UL. And this UL is supposed to get children. Make we just say now simple li. Make we just say uh, list one. So once we not like this, we kind of get these two items here, right? This one will be use or said. This second um, text for here. Pigeon GPT says. So this will just help us differentiate between uh, the two uh, elements with the inside this list for here. We go need also get the form. Another form we will gonna use. They send our prompts or they create our prompts. They send to ChatGPT. So, so what we want to say? We want a form. So we we'll say form. I'm oh sorry, not a class of form, but we want a form element. And this form element, make we say it gets a child of input. After that input, we also want a button. So we we'll say BTN for there. If I press tab here, we could just clean this action for here. Because we don't want any action. And for the input, what you want to do for the input, we say we go set the type to text and then we go just set the name to prompt. As we don't like this, say the name go be prompt. Make we give them a placeholder. This go be our placeholder. And for inside this button for here, what you want to be say, we want a way where we say if we submit the button, so we're gonna make the button a type of submit, and then make we just say ask AI as the content or the text for this button. So we we'll say ask AI, and just like that, we suppose don't get our uh, front end code. Make we go back into the front end. What you want to say, make we add some styles for here first. Make we make sure say we don't arrange our set, and to add the style, since this no be CSS video. What we go do be say if you know all these things, you feel watch my CSS playlist, you feel watch that one, and then you understand all the CSS while away there here. So what I go do be say I go just copy all my CSS for the GitHub repo. So I could just paste them just to add the style and we feel move fast fast for here. So if I press save, go back into the project. So you see, say we get this list for here, and we see, say we get this for here also. So it just arrange all our styles for here, and even say it they even responsive. So make we check, say they respond. Uh huh, it they very responsive. But if we say hello, you know they work. If they submit, you know they work. It just they you know pass the parameter here as a local host, and it even refresh the page. So make we start to add those ones, and then we're going to add the values for the charts. So that we go to see our chat, then we we'll go connect them to the backend. And uh, now for inside the app.js, we want since we don't already import our use state hook, what we're gonna do is say we want call const. What we say, we get this array here, and we destructure this array from the use state hook. Make we just call them for here and make we make them an empty string for the initial value that are waiting we put this for. Now, for inside this array, as we did the structure around, make we first name our hooks. Make we just call them user value and then make we call set user value. What you want to be say for inside here, we could just say for inside this input though, we want to add our value. So we'll say this value now will be anything where the user value be, sorry. 
anytime we put something in this user value, nine will be this value for here. Okay, nine we want as the value. But also we want an unchange event. So we'll say unchange. And this we know say it is taking a function. And this function they take in an event which we could call E. And we could just say as they call E for there, we want to set the state of the user value. This E dot and we want the target value. So make we see how it will behave. Make we try console log something else. So we're gonna see our console log. Now, when you don't know what's in all these things, be go check the other video on React. You go understand all these things about hooks and all these things, what they do. And we could just say we want the user value whenever it changes. So, make we go back into our browser and make we start to add some code here. Make we start say hello. And you see, say it a console log these values for here. So, anything when we do, it gonna give us that code for here inside our console, right? So, make we go back into our code, clean this out. We won't create something will go happen whenever we submit the form. So, we're gonna say on submit on top the form submit. Whenever we submit the form, we want a function make it run. So, we want an on submit function and make we call or make we create this on submit function where we want nine go happen whenever we submit the form just for here create that function so we'll say const on submit and this part arrow function what we go do we say so we want the event or we want the event and then we want to say we want the event dot prevent default and if we call this function like this, this go prevent the form for submitting. Make we just console log a simple message. Make we just say this value will be user value. So we suppose the console log the user value whenever we hit this and this no suppose refresh the page. Make we try on. So we say hello. We're gonna get the value for here. Say hello. And the page in you know the submit again. Everything they work the way we want to make it work. If you click on this is a way to get the value and in you know order to refresh the page. So now we go back into our um, code editor, clean this uh, value for here. Now, what you want, we say we want some sort of object. And this object, just like the object we get for the server, we're gonna say we want the role, sorry, role. As now role, we're gonna say we want make the value of this role, make it be user. And as we don't set them to user, I'm going to set the content. Anything where the user puts, now we want. So we're going to say user value. So now our content will be the user value. Okay. So make we assign them to a variable. So make we just call this variable const uh, message. I make we just assign them to that variable for their so. So this go this message now for here, it go they help us they arrange all our messages where we they get from the user. Make we try run our fetch request. Make we say we want fetch. And of course, you know, say our code they run on the server on the back end somewhere. So what we want to do we say we want to set the path to that back end. So we're gonna say this part to this back end now HTTP. Since you know they're secure, we're gonna say HTTP, but we want local host and then we want to set the ports. Remember the ports where we set for the back end now 8000, but we define the path or the file will be slash API. Now, the second parameter we want for here now we want an object, and this object we're gonna give up a method, and this method now it will collect the post, make a Post request. So this will be post request. So just the way we configure this, our thunder, this post request for here. Now we they try do the way we take down for this our thunder clients. Now we they try do for this our front end. So so we could say now post request. And uh, because now post request, we could also need to give them a header. Remember, say we don't add header for before. Now now if we come inside our thunder client and we come inside header. So we get this code for here. So this uh, content type and application JSON and all that good stuff. So we now we need to do for here. So also, so we will set our header. But this our header now. It is taking an object, and this object we will say okay. Oh, it is collect um, content dash type. Make sure say you spell up exactly like this. This one you suppose be the follow. You suppose be this same. No fi and goat. You know fi call monkey. You must be this. Okay. So once you do it like this. 
what you want to say we will call say application so just like we did before application i'm going to slash json so that means say this application they always they expect json okay after this header where we get for here now here we want to come past the body now once we get that body they run what you want to do we say we want to run the default or follow com json object but one call the stringify on top of the stringify method what in they help us do it they say they help us they convert them as json for us whatever object where we get it could they pass them as json and of course which object we want pass we want pass this object for here then at this message with the here so whatever message we get so we're gonna say one pass message into this body as json so anytime we hit this request now like this anytime we make this fetch request for here it go they run and it go they pass this message whatever we type into the user information or the user um state for here you go they pass that state as a message into this body as json we say our back end now go call the expect them and once you see them it go happy for us for here this is our response if you don't come back immediately so one thing we would like to say we would like make them asynchronous all right now to do that make sure say you come here on top of this our function here and then we could just say a sync so this will make our request asynchronous but since our request on the asynchronous we feel await our fetch uh, request so we say const and make we call this response uh, as we call our response make we assign them to something to this fetch but we will say await i can they spell them a wait or wait so we'll say await for here so this go wait until a response comes back as we they don't like this it not gonna make sense whether we make we feel just wrap them inside a try catch block right so many say we won't try something and if it go well then uh, we won't try fetch the request and if the request work well then we go give the user back on the front end but if the request go bad then go we're gonna need to do something so make we wrap this code for here inside a try catch block so what i'm going to say for on top here i could just say try and catch and for inside here i feel they put all the code where i want so i could just come here and copy this whole uh one make we move on into the try block okay and for inside this try block now we get our functioning code so our code will run but make we just say if we get an error make we just say clg or console.log and then we could just log out an error or then at this error where we get for here okay now if the response works correctly then if we try them and the response works correctly we will like do something with them right we won't await the response so i can't dispel wait so we're gonna say await and when we they await this response what we want to be say we want convert them back to json so whenever the response done from the server give us something we want set them to json for here so we will call them say this is not json will be expect to but make we assign them to a variable so we feel they work with them so we we'll say const data and make we just assign them to this um variable for here like i scroll now small phone now what i want to be say i want first console log the data make we go back into the browser Aha, uh -huh, everything on the work. So make we say hello and we press enter or click here. Okay, we get some sort of error, and this error it they come based on say connection they refuse. The reason we say our server, you know, they own for our local side. So we could go back into our VS Code. And if you look, you could see say our server they only run on our front end, you know, they run our back end server so you come this icon for here and then you go click on this split tab or you go press ctrl shift and five as we don't click now we don't open this terminal for here so now what if we do we say we click on the run our back end so if you check this directory where we did so you can see say we did our root directory for here what you want to do we want to run our npm command so you can say pnpm run dev and now our dev server they run for our server here so if we come back into our local host make we try make this request again our server supposed to respond and you just say our assistant they respond for here so make we go back to the browser make we see whether we go get something so we say hi 
and we make that request for here we get something back so if you check out with the cc we they get a response back from chat gpt's uh, api make we go back and make sure say you leave your front end running and you leave the back end also running for here for our local machine make i just close this one come out uh-huh for inside here what you want to do we go enter back into this our on submit function where we they work with we want to use this information do something so make i just duplicate this line and then we'll just change this hook one column chat log and this chat log make we just say we want to set the chat log so we go say set chat log so this hook go first be an empty array that's why we go assign them to an array instead of a string like we do for the value here because we want them as an array we're going to save anything where we put inside one can go use this array now where we don't get for here we won't put them inside our data we won't pass this data where we get into this array what i want to do is say i want to set the chat log data what we want to be say we want passing a callback function all right and this callback function are just simple fat arrow function but the parameter for this callback function now the current value so we'll say current for here and once we get that current value what you want to be say we want pass them into and into this array okay so we want return an array from inside this callback function then i'm waiting they do now this array now waiting they do we say we want take waiting the previous value of this array b which now the current as we done this one way there for here so we want take that um current value and then we want to do something with them we go like first spread all the values with the inside them so we go use the javascript spread operator so we go spread all that value into this array but nobody there we're not going to just stop there we go call this talks and we want to add the message so we go say message i remember say this message now this message for here will be the structure as the user's message then and only then we won't go add the data dot completion so make we see we go into the list and we won't show for this front end for this list here so for here for inside this on other list what we will do is since we're there inside jsx we go feel write our javascript expressions for inside here which now are chat log and one map over ram so we'll say dot map that means say we want to create another copy of this array and then we want to do something with this copy of this array it is taking a callback function this callback function of course in its first parameter make we just call them chat for here and if you say now we will get the first parameter as the chat uh, we go talk say now we want to make it return something so we just they say okay we'll make it just return something that's not why we they use the fat arrow function and then we go compare this chat where we just get for there then go say if the chat row and we will say if this chat row we could use the equals the equals to the user remember say we suppose get either user or we suppose get uh where we suppose get user or assistant or system then we want to do something so we could come say now want to say in our expression with the right we want compare if that event go don't happen so we say if that happened then we want to do something and what we want to be say we want take this first array and put that here oh sorry this first list of you said then make we put them there so that it will be the user we say this kind of thing all right and then we want to say if that not be the case otherwise then because we they use ternary operators for here we want to talk say otherwise make it do something else of course which now the second one say gpt go say something so if we press save for here we suppose get this two items we're going to show we're going to map over them because we just show only this empty text so make we add the other uh element for inside here we could just say we want a span make it just help us do something so we'll put some jsx inside this span tag and we will say this span tag it expect charts dot content so we'll say content this is going to give us the content of our items we really expect so make we come also make we do the same for inside the second li so i could just duplicate this this content here and we go press save so we get these two which now li which this one now for uh, chat gpt for the bottom and the other one for the top now for our own conversations with chat gpt so make we go back make we say hi hi we get a response back 
all right cool so no worry about this issue we go fix this now now um, but now we they get the response back so they see our message of hi and we they see our chat gpt response on the front end of our application so remember we they run this on top of our local machine and our server they run on the back end for our local machine that are how all these things they work but they interact with chat gpt's api so what you want to be say we want to now take all these things now we want to fix make we fix this bug for here i'm sorry not be bug but make we fix this list uh if you never watch the video about list where i explain more about list for react go watch that video too you can feel understand waiting they cost this um warning for here even though they work it will be best practice to leave this one in here so we can make we go fix them um make we go back into our code editor and just for here we could just talk say we won't go add our id so right now we make we just say one just add the id as our second parameter so make we just call them idx okay as per index because the second parameter of this map method it they give us the index of the item of each item so we won't take that index now and we won't just make we just pass them in as key just to fix that issue there so we can say idx uh, make we do the same for this one also. Uh, of course, if you make this a component and then you feel just work with them, but since this is a very small application, I just will say make we just work with them. And for those of us who know to know React, make we be familiar uh, with this kind of thing, make we know they confused. Moving on, make we see say that error don't go, make we go back into our VS Code. And of course, if we uh, make we refresh, that error go don't clear. So if we say hi again, we they get a response back. Awesome. So uh, what if we we get an error? What if the server did down or something happened? We suppose get some sort of method or uh, error handler. So make we go back into our code. We go help us arrange this code back. So for here now, what we want to say we want to scroll to the top of inside this our function here before we start today. Even the user, uh, what we want first quickly clean the console log out and then underneath this function for here underneath this sorry this hook for here where we set this hook we want to do something so we want to clear all the items we go do inside this here we want to reset them back to this value for here remember say whenever they change the value we they update the state for here but we don't want to update the state instead we want now just update the state but give them back to in the default value which now sets user value and we want to set this user value to just an empty string so this will help us clean the value whenever we do I'll make we test run now make we say uh body then can be ah uh, I did well if we tell them like this and then we click on this make we see already our text don't clear and uh, chat GPT they work for us nice nice for here so make we uh, go back into our uh, VS code and now what you want to be say make we add that error handling so we'll say if something don't happen that now if the response dot status if that status now if you know day equals to 200 we want to do something and what you want to be say for inside this if block now say we want to throw an error so we go say throw what you want to be say we want to throw this error as per the data dot error where if we come from our server otherwise we feel even do a new error and we want to take the error constructor and we want to use this error constructor now we want to say what you want to do for here now make we even make this with back ticks so we want to say make the request no we go so this is not just our own error handling for something when no agree work so we could just put that there i'm gonna say response dot status and now like this this go handle our error messages whenever we they get any error for here so so make we check our application again and if you check here you go see say everything don't they work but if we restart our page now you can see say we don't get any notification and for the uh, finished version we get a notification for here when we go back into our uh, vs code and for inside this vs code we want to set a way maybe say we're going to check if the chat log no day make we just done for here so we could just say const is empty we now we don't know what they try to do some of them now we don't watch my previous video you can see say if this is empty so ty 
Um, we could just assign them um, to something. So we could say if not chat, that now this chat log state where they here. Now now if it they like this empty uh, dot length. So we want to check if it they empty as it they like this. It could they empty. Then we want to do something. Otherwise, if other elements they into RAM, if items don't they added into RAM, then I data they inside here. Then we want a, this expression go be uh, false for here. So right now it could be return true, but if we change, it could be return false for here. And then if we come down here, make we go to the bottom of the list and just inside after the li, but still inside the ul, what you want to be say we want add our JSX for here. I want to say is empty which could return true or false as a boolean if it's really empty then make it just return a h1 or rather h2 and this h2 now here we could come say you never ask anything yet so if you check our code again or if you check our browser we suppose get that text for here say you never add anything and of course if we say i did find money you can see, say it they respond, and uh, that error or that message will be put for here. Don't go. So, when I add more functionalities to this, and if add loading screen, and you say that one, not day, and if add sounds, or when I even add, you know, more themes, and just explore with these kind of things. I could be very excited to see what you I build on top of this thing. Of course, if you want to share your work, share them for the community. We, we always like see that kind of thing. So, if we say now we want to deploy this on a server. Before we go feed deploy our application, we go need go do some kind of settings. Well, first of all, our code go need day the internet because right now it day only on top of our machine. So make we just quickly deploy our backend or deploy our whole code base into GitHub. And because I do use VS Code, I could just come here into this Git for here, this Git icon. And then I go just say I want initialize a repository. It will help me initialize a repository for my GitHub. So because I never do some kind of certain things, GitHub it will not go work for me. You go see say it will show all these files for here. That are because I never create a git ignore. So we'll go come back into our root directory. Make sure say that the root directory because as we don't bundle a git ignore file. So what you want to be say we want just maybe duplicate a this copy and then just put them for the server. That go help. So I could just copy that and then right click again and make we paste that in for here. So this now go stop the other files, all those plenty files where we see for here to the go git. Here one more issue where they here and that now the dot env. So if you click this our env, you go see say this our API key is they here. And if we push our code for on top GitHub by clicking on this icon for here, you can see say our env they inside our git files where we want stage and then we want make commit on top. So what thing we're gonna need to do be say we're gonna need add this dot env into our delete or our ignore files. So to do that, you could just say star that now all dot env. Now you want ignore. Then we could just press save for here. So now this go commit the .env from the list of files. So that now why we use this file, this .git ignore file. I just say show on all these things so that I go get that experience of how you work with these kind of things. All right. So if you come here, make we add new file and the new file we want now the .env and we won't call this dot example. Waiting this file be be say if they create a copy or hint. So that other developers for future feel they work with this file. So if you just copy everything for here, put them inside this example file. But instead of make with they put this API key where I go still delete, so make gonna not try use this key text here. Say so make we press save, and this one we not get problem to push them into GitHub because it they safe. So make we close here and make we close the ignore, and then make we push this code go GitHub. So if we just say initial commit and then if we hit commit for here, as we don't commit the code for us, what we're gonna need to do, we say we're gonna need to publish this code. So when we hit publish, it go ask us if you want to make a public or private repository. But me, I go just talk say, make I make this one a public repository so that when I go fix it, and then once we publish that file, it go there our GitHub. So if we click here, 
you go open my GitHub and you go show this file. If you click on our own, you go figure go the file save. So this is now all our code for our whole application and on our fee use this anytime where you want. If you come here into the front end, you can see say we get all our front end code for inside here. So if you come inside the main app, you can see say we get our back end inside the root directory. Uh, as we get this code for here, make we go render. So you're gonna come this site with the column render.com. And if you come render, they get free plan. We say you feel they use to the host any kind of application where you want build. Some of them are gonna know Heroku, and uh, you're gonna say Heroku can't start to the collect money from some of us. And uh, that's not why we they use this render for here. And render they give us a web server, they help us deploy static websites for like React. If you even deploy cron jobs, and uh, if you do other things with this render, and um, one of the things we I like be saying are free and you feel they use them they they run your projects on top of but uh what we want to do we say we want just uh create an account and then we will get access to all these things so uh click on getting started if you never create an account or you sign in if you get an account me i go sign in if you sign in with your github your gitlab or your google for here but me i could just use my github uh, so what you want to be say uh, this now here you go to see all your projects but we now go see different projects for here you go see other uh, kind things for here so you go to see your web server you go to see all these options for your screen if you never get any um, project for render and when you click web service if we add our chat GPT make it connect to this chat GPT for here and uh, now where we add this chat GPT, we will come give our um, server a name. So make we just call them PG, sorry, PG, PT, dash API. And then if you choose the server where we want, you go choose the one where the closest to you. I go just leave them for default. If you leave them for default, you go choose the branch. So if the project get different branches, you could choose that branch. And then make we set the root directory as dot, all right? And then since we they use node for our server, we, if you choose any of them for here, if you use Python and Rust and all that, but we they use node with our NPM, but we know they use yarn. And because we know they use yarn, we they use pnpm. And we want to say install. This will help us run pnpm install to install all our dev dependencies for here. And then once we don't set up our pnpm, we go also want another command where we go to run. So make we come back into our VS code and make we see the command where we want to run for here. If you come and look into our file explorer and then you come into the package.json, you can see that we get two scripts. And the first script where we first set up, remember, now our start script and then the other one, our dev script where they use nodemon, right? So we want to run this, our start script. So remember, we feel run now pnpm start. So we'll come here and then we'll say once you don't install the packages, then you go run pnpm start. Now that will help us run node on our server from the root directory. All right, we will feel leave these settings as is because now free. If you don't pay more, now there you go feel pay all these ones, but we go leave them like that. Now, because our server, they use environment variables, then if you don't know what's in the environment variable B, then the thing where we don't they put since this secret for here. Because if they use this environment variable, what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need way to put this information on the server. So I could just need copy this information or make we just leave this open first. For inside render, I go click this advanced. Never click here, you click advanced. Once you click advanced, you go feel add environment variables for here. So if I click environment variables, now here if we add the key, paste them inside here as the key, our open AI key, and then make we put the value. Once you do them like this, no other thing where we need do. So once we click here, this will help us build our server. It will help us host our server and our application where they run from that API's endpoint. And you just say it they install all our dependencies, it they install all our dev dependencies as we want. And this will take some time only because say now the free version. If you day faster, it go if now more storage where we buy or we pay for them, it go load faster. No worry. So now our site don't day live for here. Once you don't see this live, it means say our server don't deploy. So if you copy this URL. Or if you just click here, go open up for another tab. 
we click on we're supposed to see something from chat gpt and you just say we get our api they work for us for here so woohoo congratulations and i don't try gun um what i'm gonna do be say we're gonna take this um url or this route with it for here so we go for use them um, to the call as our to the call on our api so make we copy them and then make we go back into our front end code make we close this environment variable and for inside the front end instead of make we they make our request to this back end api yeah, as a matter of fact we feel even stop our back end and then remember say we put our back end for here so we don't stop our back end server we want to change the route where this api they fetch from this will go into our path to go collect uh, our api but remember say we put them for slash api so anytime where we hit this route is supposed to interact with this post request and then it will work for us so make we save the code so since our front end uh nine they run for here so what we will do we say we could go back our project for the local for our local side to make we say how far and chat gpt they work with our api key and the answer will say i they can be so this make a lot of sense because now we don't they call our API from a remote server on the internet. So make we deploy the front end, just click new and then come static site for here. Once you click static site, it will come this PGPT, our pigeon GPT. And then for here, inside this PGPT, what you want to be say, you won't come give them a name, so make we just give them PGPT. Just to say this name, now the URL where you render go to use the form your uh, site for you, where people feel use access them, like domain name. And uh, we will go leave the branch as master. We feel just add the path to our uh, root directory. So because our root directory, now our front end, we go say we want the dot slash front end. So we want to run certain commands. So the first command we want to run a pnpm. And we want to run this our pnpm install. We go help us install all the dependencies for our code. Then we want to run the build command, which now the pnpm build. And this will help us build our front end. It will help us min uh, minimize the code. It will help us remove code where we know they use. It will help us do tree shaking, all those things with VIT. They help us do, it help us bundle them and all that. Then I'm waiting for to try to do this PNPM build for here for production. And then when it builds for production, it always gives us this output folder. It always gives us this distribution folder based on VIT. So what we want to be say, we want to give the directory to that distribution folder. So we're going to say the directory we're going to use for the front end of now the dot slash dist. Then a distribution. So D-I-S-T for here. So now, because our project knows they use any environment variable for the front end, we no need go this advanced tab. So make we just click create new site. This will help us build our website or into or our front end of with React and everything. It go build them and it go deploy them for us. Just be patient, it go finish. So our site don't they live for here. If you check out, you can see say now our site don't they live. And if you check here, our site they live. So make we open them, make we check them. And you can see say if you come this gpt.onrender.com, you can see say we get our front end. So make we check say our front end don't they work with our back end. Make we say hi. So if you check, you can see say we they get this issue for inside our fetch error that's not because we never deploy our code so make we come here back into our vs code and then because we don't already build this out that we don't already modify our routes instead of making it work with our local host making it work with the remote server we never push that code to github so make we anytime where we make changes to our code we could they push them and uh, render could they help us they deploy them automatically and once you don't like this, say added a uh, remote server to front end, make we commit them. Once you commit them, if you click here, push our code. So you go click push. So once it goes on GitHub, render go, um, go start to build our code for us. 
and then we're going to work with that code so make we try the code again once render don't build and finish and you just see our site don't build and it don't day live even day faster than before because we use pnpm so make we just click on again make we try them again make we say hi click here and as we don't talk hi you just see say it don't they give us our response and everything don't they work directly from the back end so make we try and say everything they work the way we want to make it work uh, uh i did find info so that now how we they use open ai's api and we they build this front end and back end so i hope say una really enjoyed this video if you enjoyed the video i beg make una like and make una subscribe make una also share this video we go they bring some nice nice videos for this and make una join the community so that una feel they learn with all of us and we feel they all grow together so uh thanks so much everyone for watching i'll go see you for the next video